the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the formidable predator, the world-known celebrity of the animal kingdom, the king of all dinos. Since its discovery in 1902, this dangerous predator has fascinated both researchers and the regular public. But despite its terrifying reputation, there were actually other beasts that could defeat the T-Rex. And one of the true nemeses of this dinosaur was the Triceratops, a herbivore. But despite its plant-based diet, the dino was huge and had two nightmarish large horns and a smaller one, along with thickened bones which added to its defenses and helped protect itself from dreadful predators like the T-Rex. This dino was something like proof that herbivores were no pushovers. Its formidable horns were about a foot wide at their base and tapered into mean points capable of skewering any predator, even a T-Rex like Juicy Barbecue. The colossal skull of the Triceratops sported an enormous frill made of protective solid bone, which was topped with hornlets. From the tip of the animal's beak to the spiked rim of the frill, the head of the Triceratops could reach a whopping 10 feet in length and weigh around a ton. This gargantuan construction, the head of the dino, was attached to the body with the help of a ball and socket joint. This allowed the dino to swivel its head around with astonishing speed, brandishing its horns to scare predators away. That's one of the reasons why a T-Rex that decided to attack a Triceratops was actually taking a big risk. The battle could easily go either way. Of course, the king of the dinosaur world could win and get its long-awaited feast, but just as likely, the hunted could become the hunter and end the T-Rex's game. Now, how about we find some more cool and lesser-known facts about those intriguing creatures, dinosaurs? For example, dinos almost certainly did not roar. Scientists think they might have cooed instead. More accurately, they probably produced sounds in ways similar to the way ostriches boo or doves coo. You see, many modern birds use a method of producing sounds called closed-mouth vocalization. Sounds are made by inflating the throat rather than passing air through the syrinx, the vocal organ of birds. In other words, the Jurassic Park movies got it all wrong. A lot of early dino reconstructions appeared under the influence of those scary noises that we associate with modern predators, like lions. So, on screen, dinosaurs have their mouths open when they produce sounds, just like lions when they roar. But real dinos wouldn't have done that, especially not before charging at their prey. They wouldn't have advertised their presence to other animals nearby, not when all they wanted was to have a meal. The Quetzalcoatlus was a member of the ancient group of flying reptiles, pterosaurs. And it was also the largest flying animal to have ever lived on Earth. The giraffe-sized creature had thin limbs, a startlingly long beak, and a staggering 40-foot wingspan. Researchers believe that these creatures could have also used their folded-up wings as legs, so they probably walked on all fours. Scientists discovered the Quetzalcoatlus about 50 years ago, but they still have a tricky time trying to piece together the details of this animal's life. For example, how did it even manage to lift its ginormous body off the ground when flying? Whatever the answer is, this creature is our first real look at the entirety of the largest animals ever to fly. One of the reasons why it's been taking so long to unearth the secrets of the Quetzalcoatlus is because this creature had hollow bones that helped it to fly, just like modern flying animals. So, when you find these potato chips-like bones preserved in super hard rock, you need to somehow remove them without destroying them. And that's a really tough task. The Tyrannosaurus Rex was quite a slow runner. Its speed was likely to be just about 10 miles per hour which is approximately as fast as the speed of an average human runner. As for T-Rex babies, according to hatchling recreations from the American Museum of Natural History, they were pretty cute. About the size of super skinny turkeys, 
and covered with downy feathers. The largest land-based dino was the Argentinosaurus. This massive animal often reached up to 130 feet in length and 69 feet in height. Considering the average blue whale is around 70 feet long, you can easily imagine just how giant that dinosaur was. Many dinos had feathers, and I'm not only talking about avian ones. The largest feathered dinosaur we know about was the Eutyranus huali, which translates as a beautiful feathered tyrant. It was a super predator and cousin of the T-Rex. Scientists think that the dino most likely relied on its feathers to stay warm. However surprising it may sound, some of the biggest dinosaurs were actually herbivores. Let's take the Brachiosaurus and Apatosaurus, for example. These creatures were giant but followed a plant-based diet. Now, I'm not sure if you should try it or not, but apparently, you can tell the difference between a simple stone and a dinosaur fossil by licking it. It may not sound like the most legitimate approach, but even paleontologists sometimes find themselves doing this. The thing is, if you lick a potential fossil, it will slightly stick to your tongue. That's because fossils are way more porous than stones. When dinosaurs first saw the light of day during the Triassic period, around 230 million years ago, Earth's continents were clustered together and formed one giant supercontinent called Pangaea. Over the next 165 million years, Pangaea slowly drifted apart, and that separated many dinosaur species from one another. And still, most of the world's dinosaur fossils are found in three places. The high-altitude badlands of China, North America, and Argentina have the largest amount of fossils, or at least easily accessible ones. In reality, most parts of the world are covered with fossils. But those located in desert-like environments are easier to find due to the lack of vegetation. Interestingly, most fossilized dino bones aren't bones anymore. The fossilization process often occurs when something gets trapped between layers of sediment or sand. For millions of years, those remnants stay there. At one point, they got surrounded by a layer of water. It replaces the original organic material with minerals. In other words, it's not the real thing anymore. It's a rock-like copy. The Triceratops boasted three giant horns sticking out of its head, but its teeth were even more fascinating. This dino had around 800 teeth, and new ones kept growing throughout its life. These teeth grew in sets of 36 to 40 tooth columns, with each column having 3 to 5 teeth, vertically stacked on one another. Some dinos had hollow bones, like today's birds. These creatures stored air in their bones, which helped them improve their breathing abilities. It made these dinosaurs lighter on their feet and allowed them to breathe much more efficiently. The Nigesaurus replaced its teeth every two weeks. This unique creature had rows and rows of teeth in reserve. They were hidden away in its mouth, and when a set of teeth wore out, they fell out, and the next row moved into position. Dinosaurs didn't all go extinct at the same time as soon as the asteroid crashed into Earth. Instead, the space rock likely triggered a chain reaction of events which changed the face of the planet. Of course, it didn't happen overnight, but over the next few hundred or even thousands of years. As a result, all but avian dinosaurs went extinct. The word dinosaur came from the Greek language Danos means terrible, and Soros means lizard. So basically, dinosaur can be translated to terrible lizard. You may object that not all dinosaurs were terrifying predators. This name might be appropriate for the T-Rex, but not, let's say, the tiny May. Rumor has it that when Sir Richard Owen, an English biologist, came up with the name for dinosaurs, he used the word terrible in a different sense. He described those ancient creatures as fearfully great, as in far larger in size than any previously discovered reptiles.
that's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.